Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be considering the 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, I've talked about it in the past. Uh, we're going to be looking at it from the perspective of, is this something that you should get in, get into, right? Should you have uh, a gun that shoots 6.5 Creedmoor? Now, the obvious answer is yes, of course you should. You should have as many guns as possible and as many different calibers as possible. Uh, but I want to come from the approach this from the perspective that 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 most people have limited funds um and also limited time right because you know having a whole bunch of guns that sit in the safe not very useful to you or the guns okay um so you know um every day i, I mean i shoot every day but um it's a question of which guns am i going to shoot okay uh which ammunition would i rather be restocking <clears throat> so Assuming that there's some limitations that you have to kind of adhere to, uh, whether it's it's financial or time, then and everybody's limited by time, regardless of you know regardless of money, everybody's limited by time. Okay, um, so I was considering the six five Creedmoor. Uh, I did some research on it. Um, I've shot it. Okay, not I don't have a six five uh, Creedmoor gun, but I've shot other people's guns. Uh, it's kind of like what, what the 6.5 Creedmoor tries to do is sort of give you a recoil closer to a 5.56, uh, but power uh, that's closer to a 308. Okay, so that's kind of what it's trying to do. Um, so, and it kind of lands in the middle there somewhere. So, the, the recoil is more than a 5.56. Um, now, as far, as far as power, okay. If you're looking at it from from energy, right? Because there's there's basically two different ways that we kind of measure the power of ammunition: uh, energy and momentum. Energy being the more common way of, of, of looking at, at power. So, out of the muzzle, the 308 has has more energy. Okay. Uh, now that the 308 has more energy out to about some 700-ish yards, okay? Because the 308 is a fatter bullet, as it goes out to about 700 yards, uh, the the wind drag, right, the wind resistance slows it down. So after about 700 yards, the 6.5 Creedmoor uh, tends to have more energy, okay? Not by a whole lot, but it just it has it has a little bit more energy okay now that's if you're looking at it from the energy perspective if you're looking at it from a from a momentum calculation and both of these are calculated numbers that look at the the mass of the bullet and the velocity the differences with velocity were square we're giving more importance to the speed okay which tends to be like more of a whipping action right how, how much of a you know, it has like a whip, like because a whip is very light. You know, you, you can break skin with a whip, but you usually can't break bones with a whip. Okay, so it doesn't have that ability to like really push through and penetrate, right? Uh, like uh, versus a baseball bat, right? A baseball bat's going really slow. With a baseball bat, you can hit something, right? You may not break skin, but you can break bones underneath. Okay, so um, I like looking at momentum, even though it's like not as common. So when we look at the momentum calculation uh the 308 continues to have more momentum uh versus a 6.5 Creedmoor all the way out to a thousand yards okay so and both of these are calculated numbers now um again these are calculated numbers what about actual effects because you might say okay forget what the you know the calculator geeks are doing with these with these things what's the actual effect so I was watching a video from this guy, I forgot which channel it is, that, has, that does lots of hunting and has hunted a uh, large game with both 308 and 65 Creedmoor. And what he said is that both of these cartridges are basically have a similar effect out to about 600 yards, okay? And then past 600 yards, like once you get into the 700 yards, they both they both start to struggle meaning not that they don't they can't kill the animal but uh, what he has noticed is like at 700 yards plus uh, the animal let's say will will die slower or um it takes more bullets to, to kill it um so it just it starts having diminishing both of these cartridges 
start having diminishing returns uh, past 700 yards on large game. Okay, so from the perspective of this hunter that I was watching that, 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 that basically does lots of hunting, lots of hunting with both of these cartridges, they both struggle at or past 700 yards. Now, as far as bullet drop, uh, one of the benefits of the 6.5 Creedmoor is it, because it's a fat, the bullet is going a little bit faster, it has less drop. So I was watching another video of a different guy that also shoots both of these cartridges. And I'm referring to other people's experience because I'm a 308 guy. I, don't, I have shot 6.5 Creedmoor, but I don't have a whole lot of experience with 6.5 Creedmoor. So this guy made an excellent point. He's like, you know what, if I'm, if I'm shooting, let's say, 800 yards, you know, what's the difference if I dial up? you know, 10 mils, or if I dial up only eight mils, okay? So so he's like, you know, what, what's the difference? It makes no difference to me. I'm dialing up either way. Uh, it's a question of whether I'm going to go up 10 or, you know, am I going to go up 10 or am I going to go up eight or, or some other number? Um, you know, or for wind holds, is a question of, like, is he going to hold an extra, you know, half mil? You know, and especially with, with trying to hold for wind, the wind is so inconsistent that most of the time you just got to look for splashes, okay, and correct based on that. So that's some really interesting information that I thought you guys should have. Now, from my perspective, right, um, as a, you know, because my primary interest in these type of guns is, you know, SHTF, Mad Max, Apocalypse. To me, the 308 is anti-material, okay, um, I'm a big believer in 5.56. I want to get as much as I possibly can out of the 5.56, which is cheaper. I have more rounds of, right? I can, I can you know, have a much bigger stockpile of 5.56. I want to basically squeeze as much as possible out of my 5.56 before moving up to some other caliber um, that's, that I have less rounds of, okay? Uh, and less guns up, right? Because uh, with AR-15s, you know, if they if they get lost, broken, abandoned, traded, w whatever, you know, stolen, you know, I've got a lot more AR-15s um, versus guns in whether it be 308 or 6.5 Primo. Uh, I've got less of these guns. Okay, so 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 a gun like a like a 308 or 6.5 Primo, for uh, well, in my case, 308 is specifically anti-material okay uh particularly for pun you know like punching through barriers okay that's why i look at the momentum number uh in addition to the to the energy number uh particularly with uh anti-vehicle defense you know again think of uh mad max road warrior uh, you know convoy of trucks trying to run you down uh that's that's the function that i have uh for the 308 AR-10, okay? Um, so, um, from zero distance out to... And remember, in a SHT... You know, if you're using it for anti-vehicle, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's... The 308 is going to be a better choice, even, let's say, at 200 yards, if you've got a vehicle coming at you, right? That's going to be a better choice. So, it's not purely for distance shooting. Um, even at close distance, that's going to have an advantage. Now... In, as far as 6.5 Creedmoor versus 308, uh, under under 700 yards, the 308 has an advantage, right? And again, you got to be comparing similar uh, um, um, ammunition, right? When we're looking at 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, you got to be looking at uh, ammunition of the same grade, right? Um, you can't compare like target loads to like you know high power, you know some high power loads. On you got to be of the same grade, so. When you're looking at the same grade, uh, the 308 has both an energy uh, and uh, momentum advantage uh, below 700 yards, definitely under 500 yards. Um, so, that, so again, that's why I, you know, I go 38. But aside from that, there's another reason why I I say go 308. Okay. Um, the the six five Creedmoor, from what I've been able to gather, uh, is what people will, will will call a barrel burner, okay? Because the the six five Creedmoor is a higher pressure round going at a higher velocity, it will eat through your barrel faster, okay? And uh, especially on a you know it's like one thing it's one thing if I'm burning out AR-15s right that have 
that I have lots of. Uh, it's another thing if I'm burning out 308s that I don't have a lot of. So that's a that's a consideration, okay? You know, so um, how much faster does it burn out? So if you listen to competition shooters, right, uh, they will tell you that that the 6.5 Creedmoor is good for about 2,000-ish rounds, which to me is like, shit, man, I do that like in a couple of months. Um, and they do it as well. They may do it as well, but to them, it's part of their expense that they just changing barrels, right? Um, so, so competition shooters will tell you that the 6.5 Creedmoor is about a 2,000-round 2000, 2000 barrel, okay? And they'll tell you that the 308 uh, is about an 8,000 round barrel. Now, with these competition shooters, I mean, to them, a barrel is burnt if the group opens up by like a quarter inch, okay? Uh, so if it goes from shooting like a, a one quarter inch to half an inch at 100 yards, I mean, that's a burnt barrel to them, okay? So um, that obviously is not the case with me, right? That's not the case with most people that would want a gun like this for survival or SHTF or that type for that type of function okay um so i'm okay with groupings that are all the way up to two inches okay two moa guns are are just fine with me okay but you want to start small so that you have a little bit you know you have a lot more margin as you run up the round counts uh you know if you because if you start with a one moa gun yeah you know for me this is this shoots about an inch and a quarter um it's probably good for about 22 to 25,000 rounds. Okay, by the time it gets to 25,000 rounds, and obviously when it gets to 25,000 rounds, the groups are going to start keeling. But on the way up there, the groups are going to start opening up. Uh, you know, they're going to start moving towards that two M away, two and a half M away, pushing towards three M away. You know, and, and that's fine because that will still get me out to 500 yards. Okay, so for me. Like for a competition shooter, they look at a 6.5 Creedmoor and they say 2,000 round barrel versus 308, 8,000 round barrel. For most people, you can look at these two guns and you can say um, 6.5 Creedmoor, 8,000 round barrel, um, 308, uh, let's say 25,000 round barrel. Okay, so that's a you know that's a, that's a way that we can look at it. So for me, that's significant. Okay, um, that's significant. Especially on a on a 308 gun, where it's not as common as an AR-15, it's not as standardized. Uh, I mean, it's not as you know. I mean, this is not as easily replaced. First of all, it's a lot. It's a more expensive gun. Okay, uh, the uh, you know the uh, now I got this. This is a Palmetto, great bargain. I've done many videos on this. I'll put a playlist below in the comments. Um, the lower was two hundred dollars. Uh, and then the upper was $500, so I'm $700 into this AR-10 over here. Uh, and then I got a $500 scope on top of this. That's the primary arms 5 to 25 by 56. Um, but as far as the gun itself, I got a $700 gun there. Uh, you know, so so the upper by itself, like I said, was $500 versus typical AR-15 uppers that are like $300 from Palmetto. Okay, so I mean overall we got a $700 gun versus a $500 AR-15. So because the, you know, the, you know, because these guns are um, more expensive, uh, harder to, and they're not standardized, so it's harder to come by parts. You know, that's a concern, right? That's a concern. Uh, if if the 6.5 Creedmoor is running through the barrel faster, that's a that would be a reason why I would may I may want to stick with a with a 308. Um, even uh, you know, I mean, I mean that's just. Something that I mean, that was a consideration for me, maybe one for you. Now, um, the uh, 6.5 because on this Palmetto uh, AR 10, right? This is a PA 10 Gen 3. Um, they I can get a 6.5 Creedmoor upper and put on this AR 10 lower, okay? So, w within the same manufacturer, you might be able to do that. You can do it with Palmetto, I don't know if you can do it with other manufacturers. Uh, again, this stuff is, you know, AR-10, 6.5, Creedmoor guns, they're not, there's no mil spec, they're not standardized. So you pretty much, you know, with, with very few exceptions, you have to go back to the manufacturer to get, to get parts, right? Now, some of the stuff like, you know, like the trigger group in this is, it has a mil spec trigger group. 
but again, you know, it, there's no guarantee. If you buy it from a different manufacturer, you know, they might have a, an entirely proprietary trigger group. Okay, so th these are things that you want to be considering. Um, so after weighing all the things that I mentioned, right? Um, in my opinion, it's like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to go with a six five. Now, six five Creedmoor makes a lot of sense if you're shooting past a thousand yards regularly. Okay, the when I did the calculation. The, the 308 had a momentum of 32. The 6.5 Creedmoor had a momentum of 31. Okay, so they're getting really close. I'm pretty sure by, by 1,200 by, by 1200 yards, the Creedmoor is probably going to surpass uh, the 308 in terms of momentum. Um, and at that distance out there, like 1,200 yards, the 308 is going to really start dropping. So the six, I mean, that's where it's like you may, because I said earlier that like it's 800 yards. What's the difference if you dial up eight mils or you dial up uh, 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 10 mils, right? But if you're out at like 1,200 yards, you may run out of elevation in your turn. You may not be able to dial any higher uh, if you're shooting 308 versus 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay, so so the 6.5 Creedmoor uh, may may give you that option. So. Um, if I was like for me, it's a struggle to get out to a thousand yard range. Right? I gotta drive some like, you know. I mean, I can shoot 200 yards every day. Uh, I can shoot 500 yards, you know, several times a month. Okay, uh, but to get to like 800 yards to a thousand yards, I gotta do like four hours of driving. So and and I I don't have a place where I can shoot like 1,200 yards. So for me, it's like yeah, definitely uh, AR10 308. You know, that's what's the most practical for me. Um, now, as far as the price of the ammunition, the last time I checked, they're about the same. Uh, so, so it's not, which it was I was actually surprised. I expect the six five three more um, to be more expensive just because it was a novelty thing. But uh, other consideration is uh, even if they're like about about similarly priced uh, during like times of like shortage, uh, you know, political turmoil, BS. Uh, you might have a harder time finding the 6.5 Creedmoor versus the 308, which is a much more common cartridge that's been around for, you know, way longer. Okay, so uh, some things for you guys to consider. I'm not saying this one is better than that one or whatever. I'm just giving you some information. Uh, and I did keep it somewhat broad. I didn't go get too crazy with the numbers. I've done. I've talked about this in the past where I got a little bit more into the details with, with, the, with the numbers and energy and stuff like that. Uh, but I wanted to keep it a little bit more broad uh, and easier to digest. But, um, you know, these are the things that I considered um, and why I think the three, oh, you know, the AR-10 shooting the 308 uh, uh, makes makes more sense to me. Uh, now, um, 308 versus 7.62 by 5.1. Um, if, your gun, if your barrel shoots 308, uh, it will also shoot 7.62 by 5.1 NATO, okay? If your barrel says... 762 by 51 NATO. Uh, you technically you're not supposed to put 308 in there, okay? Although um, I don't think there's from from what I've I've not been able to to record a single documented case uh, of anybody's barrel actually blowing up because they shot a 308 uh, in a 762 by uh, 51. Okay. I, uh, and likewise, I've never heard of anybody's barrel actually blowing up. Because they put a 5.56 five, uh, in a 2.23 barrel. Okay, uh, I never heard of any. I've, I've heard of them blowing up for other reasons, right? Like squib loads, uh, or um, you know, trying to send a 300 blackout down a, down a 5.56 uh, a five, five, barrel. Uh, but I've never heard of anything like that. You know, like of anybody. But anyway, um, the manufacturer will tell you that hey, if it's a 308 barrel. You can shoot either 7.62 or 308, but if it's a 7.62 barrel, you can only shoot 7.62. So, something for you guys to also know. So, I'll talk to you guys soon. Drop some comments below and look for the AR-10 playlist below in the comments.